Hello everyone and welcome back to Steam World Build. This will be our third uh, session with the game, probably episode three, but uh, I like to play a little bit um, light on the games that we're assessing. I've been having a very good time with this. I'd like to see how it continues to unfold. And he special early hello to Caroluna and Solid Chrome Hickey. I hope that you guys had a wonderful Monday. Uh, that is right, this is Monday. Normally we've been playing this on the weekends for the last two sessions. However, uh, this weekend was just super busy, so uh, we're going to do this on Monday evening instead. Let's go ahead and hit continue, and we're going to go back into Intertoothville, where, unfortunately, there's only one train. I thought that there might be more trains that we laid, but uh, this game is a good bit Anno and a good bit Dungeon Keeper. And I know that as of the last episode, we were going to look at putting some... Probably some firearm manufacturing up here. Also, there's some woodlands up here that, I mean, we know we're going to need some more charcoal and such. So I want to see if we can get some more scientist residential. Hold on. Yeah, see, those are upgrades apparently from the Aristobots. So let's focus first on, I want to get some lumber mills, some foresters in here specifically. So... In order to make this work, tab to rotate. Um, I wonder if I haven't quite worked out the rules of fertility, but this is a hundred percent. Yeah, we'll unbuild these if it seems wise, but we'll put one back there, and then one back here. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't want to override any trees, but I got to say that this really does look like we can get... Nope. Right about there. Now, that does eat into a tree, but if we don't, if we don't destroy that one tree, then I don't feel like we can get all the trees back here. So, I'm going to... Screw it. I'm going to do that. And then, let's build our road back here. And we'll just connect it up to something. And we're certainly going to need to have a warehouse that all of this delivers to. So, warehouse. We will put the warehouse out here, I guess. Sure. Yeah, oh. as long as the blue touches, we should be good. Solid Chrome Hickey and Caroluna, again, I hope you both had a nice Monday. Mine was, again, very busy. Um, but... Got a lot done, and, and really, I feel, started to move things more towards the, uh, getting things stabilized towards the end of the year. Now, anytime we have a resource that's as limited as trees, I want to make sure that we're getting the very most out of it. So I do want to take a look at putting in a new steam furnace. Steam furnace is going to take wood, or sorry, go into the charcoal kiln, and then we're going to need some dirty water, which we may or may not have available. But let's get our steam furnace in here. Yeah, and we want to put that basically out at the absolute last square that we can, where it's going to get both of those, so that then we can get a lot of other coverage up here. So, I'll put the steam furnace here for now. Now, let's take a quick look. Um, there we go. Still trying to work out some of the subtle interface changes here. Dusty caverns, marshy ruins. I want to know... Okay, so we are now slowly running out of charcoal. Let's get in another charcoal kiln, and yes, we will put the charcoal kiln. What better place to get our productivity bonuses than the place that is... That, than, the, than the things that feed into the producti productivity bonuses. Let's go here. Yes, charcoal kiln. And again, I want to put this away from the trees, because any and all trees that we can possibly get into the... Um, you know, turn into foresters, I think are ideal. So now we've got that. And yes, for sure, with the 25% increase. I'm sure it does. Where does it show this? Steam, yes. Okay, we got it. All right. Now, I don't have enough people. We're going to need to have some more workers. And I think we're probably going to want to have a new community. But we have some space around the existing one. So, let's focus on filling these folks out. What is four? Yeah, I might slightly redraw this road so that we can get another person in here. 
Let's do that right now. We'll just bring this road down like that. And then we're going to unbuild this. Yeah. Okay. And now we'll get in another worker house and la da da. So people will move in and then we'll have lots of people. Hello to Grumpy and Pikachu and Platform Platypus. I've played a few hours of this game. It's pretty fun, but it gets pretty hard later. That is very interesting to hear. I have, uh, as you can see, I've been... I really feel like we can just connect that road right there. Um, I'm still relatively early in. We've gotten down to level two of the mines. Platform Platypus, I hope that you've had a great weekend and are into a good, you know, had a pretty good entry into the workday. This is a very long road for them. I'm going to pave this road. Uh, but not like that. There we go. There. Now the little guys can move a lot more quickly. So we've got more space for more um, lumberjacks. Uh, so we've got that. Now let's turn our attention to... Well, hold on. Let's see if we're running dry on anything. We do need guns. And dirty water. Okay, because that's where the steam comes in. Let's go see if we can get any dirty water from down below. So yeah, Platform Platypus, as of the last episode, I had gotten in some conveyor belts on level 2 that automated a lot of the deliveries. I have not done any conveyor belts here on level 1. For the time being, I'm just going to see if I have any water around. Any water that's not currently tapped. I don't think so. It actually looks like we did a pretty good job of grabbing everything on this layer. But let's use our radars. Let's just see if there's anything out there that might be appealing. Doesn't look like it. Let's grab this radar. Nope, just a bunch of dirt. All right, and do we have any other? We have. There is a third radar in here somewhere. I don't remember where it is though. It's one of those things that I can find. We can't tab between them. No. Pikachu was asking uh, Platform if he can call him Perry from Phineas and Ferb. Platform Platypus says no. Perry's my cousin, but he doesn't talk to the family since he went all Hollywood and started dating that Kardashian. Oh no. Now that I'm thinking about it, is it normal to even have a pet platypus? Um, I've never questioned the show. I'm not sure that I've seen Phineas and Ferb. Like, I know of it. Oh, okay, so we do have something back here. There is a scrap vein. I don't strictly need it for anything, but I don't not need it for anything. Let's go ahead and use our dig tool. And we'll get that back there. And that looks like it's probably the only unexplored thing on the level. But we've got a whole other level below, and I'm relatively sure. Now the question is, should I... Wait, where did we discover it? There it is. Let's put in a machine, I hope. Scrap extractor. And my workshop is too small. Well, we could put in a workshop right here. It's easy enough. It doesn't have to be that large. Let's start with, like, a small one. I'm basically looking for... Yes, extractor slots. It's exactly what I want. Smaller the better, because we do want to be mindful of how much all of that costs. So there's that. And then there is a, a speed in, uh, booster up here, but we never put in any conveyor belts on this floor. So if we wanted to run a conveyor belt from here, we could go up here, go all the way down here. I mean, at, at a minimum, we could get a conveyor belt from there. And from the water. Yeah, that'd be real easy to do. Okay, so show me conveyor belts. I've kind of forgotten where those things are. Here's conveyor belts. All right. So where is... I'm so sorry, you guys. I just found the mine shaft. Here it is. So yeah, let's dig through here in dusty caverns. Yeah, no, don't worry about the prospectors in dusty caverns. We're about to automate them out of jobs. And given that they're already robots, that's pretty impressive. Uh, we'll bring this down here. Down here. And in there. Okay, and now we'll do the same thing over here. Oh, 
Oh wait, can it not pump water? Cause I can't help but notice that we don't the conveyor belt. Oh, there it goes. Never mind. Hello to Jab! Platform Platinum's got to the third level of the mines and overextended myself and went through some tough times. I'm I usually play very conservatively in city builders like this, but sometimes that is like conservative to my own detriment. I'm just looking right here. Can we b dig through brittle brittle bedrock? I think we can now. Yeah, let's see if we can get through these. We got we got better diggers, so Okay, let's now we can do a bridge across. And then I'm thinking to get back there should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, into there as well. So we're going to dig here, here, and then here. And then we can run a um, conveyor belt right through all that. And I kind of like not tearing up our, our speed pads if we don't have to. Uh, here it is. So, yeah, we're going to go down like that. Wait, where did I get to the mine shaft? What? Oh, it was. I was just gonna like run it right through here, I think, and just marry it on there. Yeah. So we'll go there, there, and then let me just dig through this area here. Platform Platypus prefers the strategy of live fast, die young, and leave an attractive cor corpse. Yeah, especially in Anno, I feel like my my cautiousness is is not always good for strategy because I, I it's not less cautious and then just I, I meter out my growth really carefully probably much too carefully much too slowly and I haven't yet worked out if that's going to be an issue here so I feel like we could so the problem with this is that I feel like I'd want to like dig out that dirt right there I we could rip up the speed pad but since we can't run the conveyor belts across the floor maybe I won't worry about that as much Oh, this one we could definitely connect. Look at this. Hold on. Um, speed or conveyor belt. Bring that up here, up here, and voila. That's super easy. Oh, I just got an achievement of some kind. Connect five extractors to a single conveyor belt network. Yeah, and actually we're going to do another one right here. Let's dig through this. And then we'll actually lay down this right here. I figure if we can let the prospectors sit around and enjoy their best lives, I don't see why they should have to do a bunch of manual labor. There. And now we'll just get a conveyor belt right here. I mean, I can afford these conveyor belts. They don't... Maybe I'm wrong, but they don't seem to bring with them a whole bunch of um, maintenance and stuff. Now, I might be running out of plastics or whatever. I'm not sure. Let's see, administration window. I do still need the the water, but we've got we've got enough water that I can hold on to like 0 0.5 deficit. And then the firearms are not yet happening. Let's go downstairs because I feel like we've done a bunch of work up here. But see, I really want to maybe get this as well. Yeah, let's can I dig oh no, bedrock. As far as I know, bedrock is still undiggable. Yeah. Okay, and this is, this goes down to the next level. Okay, I feel good about where we are here. Now, level two of the mines is the marshy caverns. We're still on the lookout for that water, and we can also see that there is some gold back here and something glittering. Let's see what we can get back there. Now, here our conveyor belt network is mostly already set up. We are doing some gas extraction. Don't know if there's any specific reason we haven't gotten that yet. And then this is brittle, regular bedrock, yeah. 
And there is a gas thing back there, and this is... Yeah, we'll grab that. And then probably pop open this area here as well. Sandstone and granite. Yeah. Let's start uncovering those monsters. I would like to get these rubies pretty soon. That's gas. Oh, there's some water right there. Brittle dirt, brittle dirt, brittle dirt. Yeah, so we could get that water. We could bring it right over. Then again, we're not going to be able to go across our farm with a thing. Pikachu's got to drop a lurk. Pikachu, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully we'll see you a little bit later. Creep encountered. Okay. Well, we've got flamethrowers down here, so they should take care of that for us. I hope. Well, while we're waiting... Oh, no, we're already t burrowing into that. Yeah, we're gonna wait a second. From what the tutorials have said, the creep will spread if we don't stop it. Yeah, like that. Here we go. Okay, they're gonna take care of that just fine. These guys will... Wait, it's not currently possible to reach this tile. I guess maybe the miners are weirded out by the creep, because they can definitely get to that tile. Okay. Uh, let's definitely get a water extractor on here. And then, I would say a bridge across here, for sure. We don't want people, like, having to run all the way across. Now the only question is, sorry, I have to find the... Oh. A big wad of cash. I'll take that. We want... Safety in the mines, actually. Let's get that up there. All right. I'm looking for the, the, um, the shaft that goes back upstairs. And if I find any... Conveyor belts, so that'll lead us there. Okay, so it goes here, it goes here, it goes up here. Okay, so here's the mine shaft. <sighs> See, now I've got the problem about where is the water that I just wanted to collect. Yeah, this water is completely surrounded by that. We may not always be able to collect water. I'm... I also think that the conveyor belts could be used to bring something, even if it doesn't go all the way, doesn't it still, like go further towards the exit. So if we went the other way, go down here, come down here, gets blocked by the blocker right there, and then this is a farm right here. Yeah, maybe I won't worry about that. That feels like a very, very long trip for it to make, though. And there's our door, so we're gonna might as well dig that up as well. We're gonna dig our... build our bridge. Dig that up. Yeah, I do feel like I want to get back there. Uh, let's build a bridge back here. And then we're gonna mark that to get dug out. How are we coming on the, uh, the creep remover? Was that back here? It was, but they still haven't. Are we not allowed to dig granite? I would have thought so. Currently marked for digging, that's good. And so here they will dig no problem. I don't know why they won't dig the other place. Hello to Crow, who says this reminds me of Dungeon Keeper, two more than one, as the graphics were far better. I will say this about Dungeon Keeper. I, in Dungeon Keeper 1, it had this very cool graphical effect where when you jumped into, like, you jumped, like, physically into one of the monsters and you could, like, go around your own dungeon. In Dungeon Keeper 1, 
it would like actually give you different graphical effects depending on what you are. So if you were like one of the giant bot flies or beetles or whatever, it would actually give you sort of this compound eye image. And then there were certain other monsters. I remember one of them had like a real fish eye effect. And yeah, and they took that out of the second one. That's the one thing from the first game that I really missed. Uh, mostly just I thought it was very cool. Workforce reduction, yes. All right, let's dig there. You'll notice that I do like to try to unlock one, you know, small groups of enemies at a time so that our guys can go over and take care of them. Uh-oh, this miner didn't get the notice. But yes, this area is very Dungeon Keeper-ish. With, I think, that very important balancing change that unlike Dungeon Keeper, you cannot just, like, pick up your guys and put them to wherever you want them to be. That is extremely cool in Dungeon Keeper until until you basically realize that it shatters the the balance of the game. Sorry, there's a lot happening. If you build turrets around the excavation site before we start excavating, build at least two grenade turrets around the rocket park. This is the first time that the phrase grenade turrets has been introduced. Uh, let's get that and that. Let's go back and get that. And we're gonna dig out and get some of these um, enemies as well. Crow also remembers the eyes. Yeah, I... Dungeon Keeper was a new enemy appeared. Right. The other game that I would like to play sometime soon, Crow, is... Um, uh, Dungeons, Dungeons 3, or less likely Dungeons 4. Dungeons 4 just came out. Apparently, like, that's the one that I'm seeing a lot of people being like, oh man, they got it. Like, they nailed it. They re they really got what we wanted this series to be. But, since we already have Dungeons 4, kind of feel like I'd like, or sorry, Dungeons 3, I feel like I'd like to check that one out. Oh, um, that's Bedrock, so we'll go in that way. Okay, gas vein is back there, but behind some granite. So, let's definitely put a water extractor on here if I can. Yes, we can get one more. Now, that one is not currently on any sort of like a conveyor belt system, but we've got prospectors that are hanging out, so we're going to be okay. Harmonious Crow is not sure that she's played them. Only Dungeons-related series is Dungeon Siege 1 to 3, which I love. I played a lot of Dungeon Siege 1, and I... I tapped out of Dungeon Siege 1, and then Dungeon Siege 3 was great. That was like, that one was to me uh, much more sort of like Diablo-y. I remember, I think my main was like, wasn't there like a, a, like a, a woman who was like a sniper? I'm trying to remember. It's like, it's like some clockwood rifle, clockwork rifle or something like that. This was a very long time ago. Was it an archer? Okay. I like a rifle in my memory. It's been, it's been a minute. I, if I saw it, I would know for sure. Yeah, that game was a ton of fun, especially co-op with another person. She was ranged. Yeah, th she was my jam. Like, I really liked that character in that place town. That, that one played all the way through. Okay, everybody has a chance to recover. There's a scrap vein. Uh, we'll dig out the sandstone. We can see that there's something back here. It does look like gold, but I'm not sure if we can get there from here. Okay, bedrock, bedrock, gold nuggets. Okay, so that we can dig back to. And I am probably all out of machines, but we can put down another workshop this would be a great space for a workshop if it wasn't full of rocket. Um, probably get something 
Is this empty space back here? I feel like that's empty space. Let's dig that out. Yeah. And then maybe we can make a little workshop back here. Boy, I haven't thought about Dungeon Siege 3 in a long time. I remember, I remember Dungeon Siege 1, I read a review or something that called it basically due to the, um, the character's ability to just sort of like, aut basically auto fight on their own. I saw it referred to as a potion drinking simulator and then had it, had a harder time moving beyond it once I had that description because it felt apt to me at the time. Dungeon Siege 2, I want to say that I did not ever take the opportunity to play. And not for any reason. Like, we might even have had a... I might even have had a copy of it around. Okay. I'm not sure if there's anything back here. Well, but it's all bedrock, so even if there was, we wouldn't get to it from here. Yeah, all bedrock. I remember the big draw of Dungeon Siege was one single contiguous world with no loading screens. And like today you'll have games like Assassin's Creed, um, Odyssey, or um, I'm trying to think of other examples of games, you know, just any open world game, San Andreas, where, um, what was it, G GTA V is what I was thinking of, where you just sort of like get into a car and you drive from one end of the map and to the other, and it's all streaming the entire way. Well, Dungeon Siege, the first Dungeon Siege, was the first game I had ever seen that had anything even, even slightly approximating that. And it really did make a huge difference to be tra traversing this vast world with no... So there's that switch right there. With no load screens. Um, that was a major selling point. And at the time, it was, it was an amazing technology. So I'm sorry, which one don't I have? It must be blue. Blue goes here. Which is... Nowhere. I don't know what that means. So, just, I'm referring to the fact that there's three wires that go into this door. We've opened up the yellow one, we've opened up the green one. There is a blue wire. Normally we would follow it back, but the blue wire just stops dead and doesn't go anywhere, which is kind of curious. I wonder if this is an example where we have to set up one of the surveillance rooms. Oh, here's the armory. Now we can do, okay, so we do have grenade turrets. So let's build turrets uh, around the rocket part. It has been a few days since the last episode. I guess I'll make one here and then at least two turrets. Well, then let me put one here and then one down here. That feels like whatever direction the guys come from, we're gonna have it covered. So I hope that your weekend went okay. I hope that you are doing okay here during the work week as well. And hopefully, fingers crossed, moving in towards a, a more relaxing and pleasant holiday time. Okay, so that's one of our turrets. Bedrock, bedrock, bedrock. Yeah, so the only way into this Ironium vein is through here. This guy just does not care that he's getting um, hacked apart by our soldiers, or guards. That we can certainly dig out. Oh, and look at all of this wealth over here. What am I doing? Let's get a bridge over here. And then we're gonna dig out all of that, and that, and that. And it does look like there's oil. Okay, I don't know that I need oil right now. Oh, also, like, we did get the water, right? Is that happening? It is. We're starting to run out of plastic rooms for some reason. What's interesting is that I don't think that I've done anything recently that should have 
accelerated our usage of pl plastic shrooms, so I'm not sure why it's different than it was. Crow says so much crud going on, so much bad stuff. I'm so sorry. I really am. I'm not even going to go into it, but yes, I am hoping they'll have a relaxing holiday time, though it will be tinged with sadness, I'm sure, for various reasons that I won't go into. I know at least some of it, Crow, and I... I'm very sorry for it, and I hope... Like you said, we don't want to, like, go too deep into it. Um, but I... I hope the outlook does improve, and if we can provide some, just a little bit of distraction from it, I'd be happy for that. And otherwise, I want you to know that, that our thoughts are with you. And I, th I think I speak for a wider community, you know, both here and um, apps as well. Use the dig tool. All right, so we're going to start digging on that. Now, this is four of eight. I So I need eight workers. Okay. Um, we could probably put another worker worker barn right here. Yeah. A little bit more. There we go. All right, so I do need a little bit more than that even. Oh, but we could dig this area out. Yeah. Let's find out what's in here as well. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about where I'm, like, a little bit cautious about, like, moving forward. This seems like a great place for, like, um, some more plastic rooms. But rather than just, like, queuing up everything in the world to get dug out, it's... there's a big dose of... Uh, let me go a little bit. Oh, right, like that. So hold on, we do need a thumper. Yuck. Okay, that's fine. Thumper is... here? Yes. Alright, so we'll put in a thumper... I mean, I guess right there, it could go anywhere, but why not have it so that it covers as much radius outside what we can see as possible? That'll keep any additional thumpers away. Okay, I would like to get some plastic shrooms, since apparently I... am running a little bit light. Yeah, we'll dig out this area here. Anywhere we see this sort of, like, loamy soil. Okay, we still haven't found the edges of this, so we're going to dig out it yet more. This looks very likely to have it. I'm going to say that there's none there, there, or, yeah, there. This doesn't look like it has it. These squares over here really might, like these two in here, but they are bedrock. So I guess we'll dig out this section here. This is, an, this is now a very open area, so I'm not going to be surprised if we start getting the threat of a cave-in. Okay, now let's go to... Oh, Jetroom Farm? Oh, we're gonna need some, probably some fertile soil for that, but for right now, we'll just go with what we have. Alright, let's give that a, a short time to get sort of ready. Do I have eight miners? I do not. Right, because I was gonna build some more of this. It's more minor quarters. Now we support. <sighs> Hold on, I really need that to not be in the way. Zero more. <laughs> We're still at six. Um, I like having, like, passages, though. I don't like having big, giant open areas. We could slot something in there, but... This appears to all be bedrock. That's not really enough of a space. Uh, 
possibly something over here. Let's see what we find if we dig this out. Maybe we can get in some more miners there. Like, as far as I know, I don't super care where the miners live. They, they don't seem to go home very often. Depending on the style of this sort of game that you'd want, sometimes you want to have your living quarters either dotted out in various places so that the miners, you know, when they're hanging out at home, will go to where they want, or have one large central barrack so that when people decide to go home and get a nap or whatever, they don't have to travel too far from where they are. This game feels more like the former to me, where you can just put relatively small quarters wherever. That, I think, will give us our eight. Yes. So now we have eight miners. And an excuse to dig this out. Granite, granite, granite. Enemy soil. Granite. Well, I keep forgetting if we can dig through granite or not. I feel like we can. I do like the fact that they scream and run away before the monster spawns. It's a good instinct because it keeps them alive when this guy and his babies... Oh, they're ripping up my stuff! I don't think I knew that they did this before. Do the miners come fix it? Oh, they do. They're very good boys. But they don't put the tiling down again. That is very interesting. Okay. Okay. Enemies are mad. Oh, there's another rocket part. This is a different one. All right, that's pretty cool. We'll dig out that, and that, that, that. And uh, yeah, why don't we just add to our nightmare there? Hello to Innertooth! Innertooth, this is Innertoothville. I mean, not this specific place, but up above is. Okay, so I would like to put a brace right here. Um, well, maybe right here. That's another thing I think is cool about this game, the fact that you need to be aware of instabilities in the ceiling. If you excavate too much of a large area, you have to, um... Brace the ceiling. Okay, that's a lot of bedrock around those rubies. Intertooth made that made that mistake in Rimworld. I would still like to try Rimworld someday. But I just it's it's just one of those situations where I really feel like we've got enough enough to play for a good long time. Okay, let me dig out some of this area. I'd like to see if we have any more loamy soil. No, we don't. An Ironian vein? Yes, indeed. If I can, we'll put in an extractor machine. Yeah, I don't know what our options are to try to run a conveyor belt all the way back from here. Let's dig there, and then probably up there. Just expose these enemy cubes one at a time. And I do feel like this is going to work its way out, so let's pop back up here. I do, like, we have the, um... Really? Okay. So we're now going to be neutral on Ironium. I don't know where this dirty water is going, to be quite honest. We we got an extra... Dirty water geyser. Still acting like we have a, a crisis. So, yeah, I'm going to extend this dirt road down there, just so I know where that goes. Now, let's take a quick look at the firearm... tool. So... Black powder ma maker, yes. Sulfur distillery. Let me just check to make sure... I don't think we're making any sulfur so far. No. And that we do have gas, which I do not 
for some reason. Like, at all. We're not making any, and as far as I can see, we're not consuming any. Like, there's gas right there. I, I, I guess I wasn't prioritizing that, because I kind of thought that we'd gotten it last time. Let's look. Well, let me, let me, let me get oriented north-ish. So we are now facing north. And our fantastic conveyor belt system, which will definitely lead us back home. By the way, can I press, like, the home key? No. See, in, in Anno, we can press the home key and it will sort of um, reorient you north. In this case, I'm looking for any of those. Here we go. Okay, so they come over here, come over here. Here's our place up. And we can see that it's sort of like here-ish on the map. This, this dirty water extractor and this one right here, I do kind of feel like we could run them over. Yeah, and then connect them here. Let's do that. I'm gonna dig this up and then we'll probably just go straight over. And that's granite, but we can cut through granite now. And then we'll connect it right there. We're just gonna... Yeah, so even if they- even if this container doesn't go directly to, you know, all the way to the end, we can see there that it will connect connect a whole bunch of like boxes. Um, let's go further. Or what if it doesn't? What if it just consumed those boxes, those packages? I always thought thought that it would like hold them in a little, like, like put up a staging area and let you go in that way. Jab watched a review of the Game Awards this morning by a panel, um, and everybody was in agreement that an event that was supposed to be about game makers game that gave the makers pretty short short shrift. Uh, that and I saw a lot of um, feedback after the fact about this was a year of massive layoffs all across the industry, and there felt like to a lot of people that actually work in the games industry an extreme disconnect between this pomp and circumstance and like super glitzy sage writing and you know lighting rather and oh we can also get this scrap vein let's go in there uh live musical performances and hollywood stars coming out and meanwhile just outside of all of that uh, you know, this year has, the, like, 2023 has been an awful, awful year to work in the games industry because there's just been so many layoffs. Platform Platypus says, so Jab was saying giving 10 minutes to some celebs each and limiting the makers to 30 seconds was just wrong and it showed. The one that really got me, and I talked about it the other day, and other people have commented on this, people who are more eloquent and so forth than I am, Eloquent and so forth. Uh, playing the, the Larian guy off, that really bothered me. Because he was dedicating the game to members of the staff that had died over the six years that the game was, was in development. And I may not know the specifics of those individual passings away, but they deserved better than to have a very long speech from a few Hollywood celebrities, and this, um, like, you guys, I don't want to be too, I don't want to be overly pejorative in the way that I talk about it, but honestly, this sort of, like, fawning, um, excitement over having Hideo Kojima there again, I don't have a problem with Kojima, but he was there to talk about a game that will probably be out in a couple years at best, is, is my, my best guess. How about maybe celebrating the people that are here right now and not having this, like, I don't know, 
like I said, I, I can't think of a better word for it right now than just fawning, this sort of, like, breathless, like, excitement that Hideo Kojima is still there. He seems like a nice guy. A lot of people really appreciate his games. I haven't played a lot of Kojima games. This hive is preparing an attack that will send out hordes of enemies in a few minutes. Okay. I don't know if there's something I'm supposed to do to address that. Like, my guards seem ready to take it on. Hold on, because there's more conversation about this, and I'm I'm also very interested in it. Inner Tooth liked the music. I did like the music. I thought the music was excellent. Of everything that the Game Awards might have gotten wrong that we are currently talking about, the music was stellar. Like, I don't know what it sounded like in the room, but to watch it online, it sounded fantastic. They they nailed the acoustics of it, at least for us. Um, Crow was saying, and then Anthony Mackie prattling on about BS, and, uh, oh yeah, um... Is it, a? Uh, is it Simu Lu? I think it is. Um, about his foot. And, like, there's some stuff in there. It's like... <sighs> they're actors, so I don't know how much of what they're doing was scripted in advance, but it felt very unscripted and very meandering. And I mean, like, a lot of it. They... I like the jokes at the beginning with, um... <laughs> Christopher Judge coming out, and immediately they brought up the music and stuff, but then even that still went on a bit, and that was just the tip of the iceberg, because then you've got all of these other, like, celebrities coming out, and the... I have to, I, I really like Anthony Mackie. I think that he's a great actor, and I haven't seen the Twisted Metal series, because I just couldn't possibly be less interested in Twisted Metal, but the other stuff that I've seen, like, in the MCU, I think he's great, but... This felt really awkward, like him coming out and like trying to interact with the, um, the, the audience and other people have noted that it felt like he was really reaching for like a Keanu Reeves moment. I, I don't know. It just, it felt to me with him and with a lot of people, with a lot of people, it's like, get on with it. Why is this going for as long as it is? So I do think that we're going to get in a... And, and here I am going on at great length about uh, my bullshit as well. So... Okay. There's our thing. I'm basically looking to see, can I possibly get a conveyor belt back to here? And if I can, it's going to come in... No, it's not. It's going to come in here. So we'll put in a gas extractor. We'll run the conveyor belt. Yeah, all of our miners are actually busy doing that for right now. So it's going to be a minute. Crow was confirming Simu. Yeah, I couldn't. I'm. I couldn't remember either. And like again, that guy, uh, Simu Lu, was awesome. I. Th I think that uh, something something in the Legend of the Ten Rings. What's the name of it? Something something in the Ten Rings. I remember the Ten Rings part. Oh no. I remember really liking the movie, and I talked about it when I watched it. I am not familiar with with him as an actor outside of that, but that was great. Like like I, I enjoyed that movie a great deal. I wasn't necessarily thinking that I needed like a three or four minute story about why his foot was in a cast. I I'm sorry that it's in a cast. That like that seems kind of lousy, but also. Isn't there, like, a Hollywood award show where you could talk about that? Uh, Platform Platypus is saying, why did they bring up Kratos, but not for the God of War DLC reveal? He was on stage, like, 45 seconds before the reveal. Did he know about it? I, I'm a little bit confused, and please, I, I don't know that we can go into a lot of detail. I've seen it said at least. I'm basically waiting for the miners to finish up here. I've seen it said that the um, DLC is like some sort of like arena battle mode as Shang-Chi. Thank you, Crow. 
That's exactly what it is. Yeah, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. I, like, everybody has their favorite Marvel movies and whatnot. That, that, that one to me, that was like top shelf Marvel. I, I enjoyed that one a lot. I also happen to think that The Eternals is, The Eternals actually, like, is, was pretty well received, actually, much to my surprise, but it is, uh, I really like that one as well. Sometimes I feel like some of the best Marvel stuff is the, I've never even heard of this person. <laughs> Why are you making a movie about this? And then you go and see, it's like, oh, no, actually, that's pretty good. So I want a gas extractor, except I can't build one. So we need another quarters. Uh, we need to build another workshop. I think... We're going to open this up. What is this? This is a workshop. Okay, so we're going to blow this open. We're basically gonna open that up right there. And right there. And maybe these two as well. Nope, that's bedrock. Playing this for the first time, like I'm not I'm not doing anything that resembles planning ahead. I'm just like, oh whoops, I need some more machines. Inner tooth. Some sort of a horde mode. And don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan. Uh, like, I very, very much enjoyed the combat in the previous... What's it called game? Yes. God of War. However... Yeah, we'll dig this out too. That's one of the reasons that, like... For all I know, they just recycled a few lines that uh, Christopher Judge says earlier in the game, and, like, he might not even be involved in the DLC, for all I know. Interact with the rocket part. It's getting easier to tune into it now. I can all radio, you know. Pinnacle. Spires reached far into the sky. Threat. Expansion across the world. Abort aborted. Expansion to the stars. Aborted. Escape to the stars. Aborted. Who knows what that means? We got the thing Imogen we came for, so we better go find the rest. Indeed. Alright, hold on, because there were uh, other comments that I'm curious to read. Hold on. Um... Hold on. I just want to make sure that I didn't miss anything up above. Also, platform platforms are saying they have this argument every year after the awards. The the thing about the I have no idea how the Oscars are fun are, are funded. And I don't think it's a secret. It's probably extremely knowable. I just I don't know how they afford these like gift bags that are like worth a hundred thousand dollars that goes out to every single person that goes and stuff. Like you, you hear all the stories. What I do know is how the game awards are funded, which is ads. Lots and lots and lots of ads. Ads read by presenters, ads presented by Jeff Keighley. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised to learn that especially some of those more minor awards like best esports team are just straight up paid. Um, I, I think that it's notable when like best content creator is a list of people that I'm, I'm sure they're wonderful people. Like, I'm sure they're... Who are they? <laughs> I, I'm really not trying to dish out, like, some, like, big dig. If you were on that list, if you were nominated for Best Content Creator, I'm sure that you and your community are fantastic. I have literally never, in any context, anywhere, ever heard of any of these people. And believe me, the list of people that are famous on the internet that I don't know anything about is everyone you've ever heard of. So, like, me not knowing who you are is not a measurement of your quality. But also, I just find it notable that I don't know of anybody who knows who a lot of those folks were. That's the number one thing. Like, we were watching it in app stream. Like, just so that you guys know, everything... I would not have seen the uh, the Game Awards if not for the fact that App was watching it with his community. Um, and he was just as befuddled as anybody else. And everybody in chat was like, who are these people who, who are like the best content creators and by the way like i'm not sure that i'm over here to say oh no so and so got robbed i 
I have no idea who should have won best content creator. Like, I'm, that's not a call that I can make. Is this bedrock? Hold on. It is crud. Yeah, no, that's why I'm trying to build a conveyor belt back. So we could go up here, except there's no point in doing that because this is all bedrock. I think that as soon as this spits out some gas, it is going to ride the conveyor belt over, and I think it will be closer. Like, yeah, pickup box. Okay, so I mean, that's way closer. Um, if we could get it all the way to the thing. Where's the thing? It's up here. Okay, I mean, hypothetically, we ran it up here, ran it up here, but this is all bedrock, so we can't get through there. We could build another bridge all the way up here. Oh, unlock that at some point. Jab is saying um, the Oscars are funded by selling it to a network. Okay, that's news to me. I, I completely believe that. It's just the amount the amount of money that is throw that is uh, expended into throwing the Oscars always like just makes me pale. Inner two says my kids asked what my favorite band uh, was, and I said the Rolling Stones, and they said the Who, and Inner two said no, the Rolling Stones. Right. Everybody likes the Rolling Stones better than the Who, except for those who like the Who. <laughs> uh, Platform Platypus says. I think maybe similar to when Kratos climbs the mountain at Muspelheim, has a bunch of combat trials to go through. I, I think I did that. If that was the previous one, those were very challenging, but I enjoyed them. Um, debauchery does love previous Call of Duty devs were dishing backlash to Christopher Judge, and most of them were having the petty imagine. Oh, because of the because of the short campaign. Imagine, there was a joke that he did about the short campaign. The Petty, imagine losing all of your players after the first months to our last game, or our, our Outlast game sold your entire franchise, knowing that all they care about is player count and sales. Uh, look, man. I, I have not, I have played one Call of Duty game ever. I am not qualified to talk about the franchise. Oh, look! Oh, that's what happened to it. Sorry, the blue wire went over here and then went back there. Okay, now I know where we're trying to get to. What I was about to say about the, um... Wait, can I dig through this instead? Yeah, I'd rather do that. Except it's not possible to reach that tile for some reason. Okay, then let's dig that one. Where it is possible to reach. Okay. I, what I do know about Call of Duty, this is just, I, I don't think that I am speaking out of school. The campaign for this most recent one, the, um, what is it, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Remake or whatever it's called, I have not seen a good word about it. I'm, I'm just going based on the people that know and love the franchise, and they like the multiplayer, but they also play it for the single player. I have heard rage about this. And, and I've even asked on this stream, what is it that people are so mad about? Because I still I still don't understand it. And Christopher Judge's summation of the, that his speech was longer than the Call of Duty campaign. You guys, I don't think that Christopher Judge is like the source of all the ire against your game. <laughs> like, if it's true that the Call of Duty devs are like, dissing Christopher Judge or or his speechwriter uh, for making that joke. Maybe, maybe get some uh, some thicker skin there because Christopher Judge was making light of something that a lot of other people are substantially more angry about. Okay, so here's the good news. I am only short of firearms. We've been digging out this area, but as we've been going, we have balanced all of the deficits that we had before. Jägermeister says, this is very Anna-ish, at least above ground. And hi, hello to you, Jägermeister. Jab is saying gift bags are pretty much donated by companies who want the stars to be seen using or wearing the product. Kind of bothers me personally. Um... Platform Platypus is closing uh, Best Esports Coach. Was that another one? Crow says, I had no idea who those uh, influences were. Never heard of them. And yeah, Esports Coach. 
Intersection has flashbacks to South Park. That's an ad, ad, yep, ad, news, ad, ad, news, ad, ad. Okay, I that is a South Park reference that I goes outside my knowledge of. Intersection does like Doctor Who. And then uh, Debauchery's saying, I had to keep taking my headphones out to stream. So oh, stream has been pausing. So not sure if you touched on the other comment. Did you see the news about the day before today? I did. So unless, unless there's been new developments, which there might have been. So for anybody that doesn't know, the day before is kind of famously a fake game that was being made by a company called uh, Fantastic. And I just want to say for legal purposes that everything I'm about to say is my opinion. In my opinion, the day before was very, very clearly a fake game for a long time. And the, the only mystery about it is what, hold on, what building is this? Armory. Let's just get one more square of armory there. There. The question about it is like, what was the point? Like, why? Wait, is this, this is fertile soil. Hold on. They weren't selling pre-orders for the game. So I should probably back up slightly. The day before was allegedly a, an open world, probably MMO survival crafting looting game with graphics that were better than The Last of Us Part Two, gunplay that was better than The Division Two, and uh, terrain driving and like deformation that was better than mud than SnowRunner. Like, and I'm not kidding. Like, these are all things that they showed off. Oh, and driving mechanics that were better than like uh, Forza Horizons. This game was allegedly going to be every game except in a zombie survival apocalypse place. Hold on, we've got more of that. And you were supposed to be able to build your, you know, make your own character and go out adventuring with your friends and go into these tense zombie infested um, met metropolitan areas and extract the goods that you wanted to have and bring them back to your base. And then once back at your base, you were supposed to be able to build up a base, some, something similar to like State of Decay 2. I mean, this game promised just everything, just everything in the whole world this game was going to have. And what was interesting is that they had quote, gameplay, unquote, trailers that showed off all of these features. And it looked really, really good, as long as you don't ask any questions about the scripting and, and how tightly manufactured it all seemed to be. It seems so like, if they're not selling pre-orders, why would you fake a game? What's the point of doing that? I personally believe that we are now seeing exactly why they did that, which is they have, they sold tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of copies of this game, the game that released, and the game that people bought bears very little resemblance to anything that I just said. But I mean like very little resemblance. And what has it been like three days, three and a half days since this game came out? Oh, the company just went out of business. Whoops. Completely bankrupt, we're, we're, we're gone. By the way, we, we just locked all the doors. And that to me is extremely strange because Fantastic famously did most of their development through the work of volunteers. Hold on. This AAA game with graphics of The Last of Us and the driving physics of SnowRunner and the looting and shooting mechanics of The Division 2 was made almost entirely by volunteers. Okay, checks out, sounds good. Now, some of those volunteers were allegedly paid and a lot of those volunteers were definitely not paid. So that seems a little bit weird. So if you weren't selling pre-orders and then your game comes out and then you sell tens of thousands of copies right away and the reviews are overwhelmingly negative, what suddenly happened that you went so bankrupt that you had to close the company right now? That seems a little bit odd. And it would just be my suspicion that if the goal was to produce a, you know, or do a producer's level bait and switch, what is that, do you think? It seems like an item. 
Maybe it was just a ruby, because I don't see an item in here that looks like a big red gem. It might have just been one ruby. I don't know. Brittle bear lock. Okay, so now we can get in here. If you wanted to, I'm just saying that if, if somebody somewhere said, well, what if we came up with a giant scam and we sold it to everybody on the back of like a whole bunch of false empty promises, then we just grabbed the money and disappeared with it. This is the sort of thing that you might do. Throw something out, not tell anybody that it's not in any way the product that you told them was going to be, take the money and then just bamf out of there. Now, what I don't know, and what I suspect is in place is that I feel like Valve sort of steps in here and says, the hell you are, and says, no, you can't take all that money. But I really don't know. Like, I really don't know. Because if they're not making off with the money, I don't know why they're suddenly announcing that they are shutting up and they're closing up shop and they're not going to support the game. You would think that they would want to pretend to support the game in order to try to elicit more sales from people who are like, I don't know, just born contrarians. Yeah, and as Debauchery says, the gameplay trailers were then scrubbed from the YouTube channel. Like, all that old stuff, like, you can find it elsewhere, but not on the official website. They, uh, they forgot about those. <laughs> They're just gone now. I'm so sorry. I'm not, well, not really sorry. I'm just, like, uh, enjoying chat very much. Yeah, we've got eight miners. We can get this out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. When we do this, there's going to be a big fight. Yeah, there's going to be a big fight right here. So we should get some more turrets. That's what the game is teaching me now. So let's do a flame turret. And I'll do a flame turret right... Um... I feel like a flame turret right here would be would do a good job of keeping that. And then we'll put some... My armory is too small. Yeah, so we need a larger armory. We put armory in here, I feel like. Yes. Let's dig this out and that out. Platform Platypus is saying supposedly the sales figures leaked. Um, and by the way, that's ex like, I would be in more inclined to believe any leaks about the day before just because there's a whole lot of maybe paid, but lots and lots and lots of unpaid volunteers that believed in this product that thought that they would get some exposure for working on this amazing game who were probably now very, very angry about it and probably did have access at some point. But according to Platform Platypus, allegedly it sold like 200,000, but 91,000 have been refunded. So that's still 109,000 times $40 or $50 or whatever it is. So that is, that's a lot of money and a lot of incentive for someone of very loose morals to say, mwahaha, and then they just like vanish into the night. I just... Fantastic does not appear to have a very large office space with hundreds of employees that they were paying to keep this alive. And then when the game released to poor reviews, oh man, oh, we just can't pay all of these things. We, we have to file for bankruptcy and like let our people go file for like, you know, unemployment insurance. There's none of that. As far as I can tell, I've been following, I've never talked about it on stream. I've been trying to follow along with the the day before because hey i like video games i'm playing one right now at least allegedly sorry i need to put in another armory before we dig that up why am i failing at this yes this this one right here okay i guess somebody could come clean that up anytime they felt like or maybe they can't yeah the the big mystery I feel like for a long time in uh, the day before was like this is this is plainly a scam, but what's the what's the upshot? What's the scam part of it? 
Also, we cannot have our guys running all the way over here. I need speed pads or something. Um, I can't run conveyor belts through here. I could run a conveyor belt over here, but I feel like we're going to run afoul of this whole digging thing. Well, let's put see what we can do. Let's go like this. I should also clarify for anybody that hasn't been following this uh, chicanery with, like, rapt attention. The actual game that was released, that is now called The Day Before, does bear some vague passing... What the hell is this? Oh, it's probably just uh, an artistic... Like, like, just a little decoration, but a little mummy is over there. The actual game that came out... Um, bears sort of a vague passing resemblance, at least graphically, to some of the things that they uh, showed off in the trailers, but nothing at all in, like, the actual gameplay development. It is a... Uh, an incredibly dull and poorly executed looter shooter... sorry, extraction shooter, uh, based on everything that has been shown. Uh, you start the game... It opens up to a server list. Um, 11 out of 10 servers do not actually open up, and you just get an error message when you try to go there. Okay. Yeah, hopefully we've at least brought that pickup box a little bit closer. It's actually the prospectors that will come open that stuff up. This is all bedrock, so I can't really get through there. I don't want to blow up the miners' quarters that I just brought in. Although, although, I gotta tell you, if we did core right through there, we could get it onto the main line. I think we might have to move the minor quarters. You know what? We'll, let's move the minor quarters right here. That's what we'll do. So, let's finish digging this up, and we need to get some turrets in here, because I feel like this is going to be a, a bad deal. So, let's go to... Uh, this, and this, and yeah, some grenade turrets. We shall put a grenade turret... This has a nice, like... It's got a really long radius, so we'll put one, like, over here, and then another one over there. And that should be a good amount of defense here, I think. Oh, wait, did the raid come in? I'm so sorry. Let me uh, pause here for one second. Patikan, thank you for saying Patikan waits until uh, Angel notices the raid. Patikan, yes, thank you for the raid, and hello to everybody uh, raiding over. Sorry, let me just read through. Blarp, blarp, blarp. Um, okay, hold on. Let me try this a slightly different way because... Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Jaegermus was asking if I've tried beyond, uh, against the storm. I have not. We do have it. I very much want to play it now that it is... Uh, has, has hit 1.0, but I haven't actually seen it or tried it yet. Uh, da 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 Do the game you'd enjoy, Xbox Game Pass freebie. Yes, uh, Jägermeister, we have it on um, Steam, so I definitely intend to try that. Debauchery is also saying, you don't state, we don't have the funds to continue to support this, then nuke everything that has to do with the company, along with the CEO, nuking all of his socials and LinkedIn and changing developers for older games they've developed on Steam. See, some of that stuff I had not known had happened, but it is... Hold on. 32-person uh, service for an extraction shooter similar to Escape from Tarkov. Platform Platypus is saying that the studio is based in Russia, so there's no hope for people getting refunds or class action lawsuits. See, that, that again, I wasn't sure what jurisdiction it was. Or at least I didn't remember as of this thing, because again, I've been following along. Oh, sorry. And then... Debauchery is hoping any assets they might have stolen from other companies open lawsuits that would have more traction. And then that was around the time that the raid came in. And then two minutes. So, yes, Patigan, thank you very much for the raid. As you can tell, we're sort of talking about a few current events and getting ready that as soon as the... Um machine turrets here are put in we're gonna dig this uh dig this tool up and i don't know that we need to like sit here and watch it i i i've been very leery about like scrolling away from this when it's in progress but at the same time 
once we like set up the defenses, I don't know if there's anything that we can do to like change it, to change the outcome. Okay, that's good. And we're gonna get this in here. Patikin, how was Spider-Man? Hold on. Oops, hold on. Okay, sorry, just wanted to get some shout-outs, including for um, Patikin there. Uh, Patikin did a lot of main stuff today. Yeah, and um, Haseo just finished the game as well. Uh, I have already finished um, the Insomniac Spider-Man game, so I got a chance to watch uh, Haseo wrap up his time with it, and it's just a very, very good game. So yeah, Patikin, uh, specifically we were just talking about the day before. I do not know if you have been following that story or seen anything of it. Um, mostly, the thing is, normally in a case like this, I would be talking about like, man, I feel really bad for the people, like the development, the developers who were working on it in good faith. But uh, again, a lot of the people who were literally making the game were working unpaid. That really sucks, but I don't know, like, I don't know what else to do with that information. Like, it's not like they're out money because they weren't, un unless they were promised something different. This is, by the way, our first uh, encounter with flame turrets. Our guards have really have things in hand, though. In other words, well, hold on, this is probably loud, I, I don't know. If you work at, like, uh, Obsidian, or, or um, what was it, uh, Redfall, when they made Redfall, when Arcane Studios made Redfall, there's a very strong likelihood that there were employee bonuses tied to the prospect of good sales and good Metacritic scores. A lot of publishing contracts are written like that. It may not have been in this case, but that's how... It is, it is a bit loud. All right, we'll, we'll scroll away here a little bit. If you were working on the day before and you were working for free, unless somebody at the company said something about like, oh yeah, and when the game comes out and it, it like has all these sales, then you'll get paid. Unless it had that, and they might have for all I know, like, you're not actually out anything. So instead, I'm mostly, like, my heart is mostly for the people who, like, legitimately believe that there was going to be a great game. Because the game that was shown off by Fantastic looked like it was going to be really good. Like, if you just didn't ask very many questions about, wait a second, that doesn't look like an actual game. It looks like a very highly scripted tech demo, a very tall vertical slice of something that doesn't seem like it would really exist. Um, if you're not looking at it in that way, then I could see somebody playing, you know, looking at them and be like, oh man, that's great. And then dropping their $40 or $50, whatever it is. And like, I remember being like super excited for games that turned out not to be very good. Um, and this one, the day before just, it has, it just has that tone of that taste, that smell of being much more malicious than normal. Okay, so because our conveyor belt is not connected to anything, I think it's not running at all. So we can't bring it most of the way out. Yeah, so what we'll do is once we like, we'll make this into miners quarters and then we'll free this up and then we can extend this to the, uh, the main chain. Maxine is asking, why would anybody work for free? Uh, my best guess is on the, it's, for something like this, the promise of exposure. I think it's the idea that 
you can get in, you can get some experience working in the, the games industry. You can have like in your credits the fact that you worked on this amazing Last of Us cross with Division 2, cross with Snow Runner, cross with um, Horizon, not Horizon, uh, Forza Horizons. And then you can use that to parlay that knowledge and work experience into like a more legitimate job for which you can be paid. I think that's what the promise was. Oh, are we repairing? Hold on, a guard died. And our um, mechanic is fixing him up. I didn't know that they acted as medics. It makes sense in this world, but oh, we can get it now. You just take your time, kiddo. Don't worry, Pa. I think I got the hang of it. The enemy is endless. Unknown. Population. Turncoats. All measures fail. Last line of defense. Collapse. They made the whole canyon collapse to contain those endless villains. Ain't that both a noble and a sad tale right there? Okay, yeah, we're gonna get rid of these guys. Okay, now let's turn this into miners' quarters, and if we need to rip up like this turret here, I'd be okay with that. Let's go to quarters, miners, and... Okay, and then at a minimum, I think we wanna sell this. Here's a question. Oh, it, it'll probably be this then. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and now we'll come here and we'll do our... There. Now, yeah, look at all the, um, the boxes coming out now. Maxine is saying working for free doesn't uh, pay the bills. How do you survive? I imagine they were doing it part time along with their their other normal work. I have no idea what that sound is. OK, that's what that sound is. So we do have a thing there and I didn't actually rip out any of my turrets. So I feel like they're going to be OK. Question mark. A mo Wait, a miner left. OK, I didn't. Right. Okay, yeah, one of our miners left because they didn't have any place to sleep. I get it. Okay, here's come, here comes all of our Aeronium. Idle. Z zero of our um, prospectors are idle. I think that having one idle prospector is probably good in that it... Okay, here's what we can do. Let's put in a speed booster there. And this guy's going, 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 still going. I'm looking for any square that he's, there he goes. And then he can go super fast. Then he gets to that one, he goes super fast. Okay, so the trouble with the, the whole rest of his path is, I can put one there, but then there's another one right there. Does this drop-off box work? Like, does it, is there anything in there? Oh, there is. Okay. So you can move it closer? I don't know. But yeah, no, this is... This is definitely shipping down there. I almost want to take this up slightly. Here's what I'm talking about. If we... If we go like that, and then we put a speed vent right there, then we get the bo the, uh, the benefits, I think, of having a pickup box right there and another speed pad right there. That way, for the people that are walking, they get it, and for anybody that wants to pick up the box, they get that boost as well. And I'm thinking another speed boost, speed boost right there, because that's not actually loamy soil. Platypus is saying, 
A funny thing is if those leaked numbers are right, they sold about a million gross sales, 700,000 after Valve takes their cut. After the other costs of advertising and payroll, let's say they made um, 500,000. That's not much considering that they have working, been working on it for five years. And well, in the five years, they also pulled off some other, frankly, similar bait and switches. Uh, one of them was, yeah, hold on. We can get another um, Ironium vein right here. They they made a big announcement about how they were going to, you know, th this is as excitement for the day before is like, like it just astronomical highs. Oh, you guys, we have a big announcement and maybe even a new trailer. You guys are really going to want to tune in for this. Don't miss it. Coming up next on, uh, you know, whatever, whatever their venue of choice was. And then what was it? It was an announcement for their hot new game, Prop Night. Like, they, they deliberately weaponized people's enthusiasm for the day before in order to basically trick them hold on i just want to make sure that this um thing operates the way that it, i mean it should they weaponize people's enthusiasm for the day before by tricking them to like tune in and watch trailers for things like prop night and then oh by the way uh if you really want to see uh the day before then you should probably buy uh like prop night because that's you know, we just, we've been working really hard on it, and we want to give you guys the best possible game, and buying Prop Night is really going to help to finance that. Like, they, when I texted a friend about this earlier, I said, uh, this scam scams all the way down. Okay. So, we may have, okay, we have a very, very small deficit of water, and then we still have the gun problem. I mean, don't we all have gun problems? This is mechanic quarters, but I feel like we have an idle mechanic. That's good. The other answer, though, is not only to automate the people coming in, but also to just have more um, prospector quarters. Let's dig this out. Jelly buns, thank you so much for the um, subscription. Jab says they probably built some investors, too. Now, I'm trying to remember if this was the one... Was this the one where it came out that at least some of their funding was through Tencent? Or am I misremembering that? Am I conflating that with a different, highly troubled... Wait, where is the attack happening, though? Oh, everywhere. Not actually everywhere. But, I mean, I feel like we've got pretty good defenses set up. I mean, the, the attack is coming, but we've got three turrets here. Yep, the guards run over. They fight. Let's go look over here. Guards run over. They fight. I feel okay about this. Um, I don't... Yes, okay. Let me just get some more quarters in here. I don't want to have, like, five idle prospectors, but I would like to have some. Also, oh, workers. I'm at negative four workers. I don't actually know why we would have fewer workers than I had before. Yeah, we've added some prospectors and it's not enough. Yeah, and suffice it to say that a machine was disabled. Uh-oh. So one thing I'm learning now about this game is that it's also a little, a little tower defensey. Just like it's a little Anno and a little Dungeon Keeper, it's also for sure some... Um, some tower defense is coming in here as well. How many do we have guards? I do have eight guards, none of them idle. A machine was disabled. A different machine, I take it. Yes. All right. Well, I mean, if they come over and they repair this, that's fine. I assume that a mechanic will come and do that soon. All right. 
Uh, one of my main goals for this episode is guns, so I really do want to do that. Um, we might need a little bit more water at some point, but we'll figure that out. Oh, you guys, you know, be fun. I, I really want to take a look at the recap because Patekin was showing his the 2023 recap. We'll take a look at that later. Oh, yeah, Platform Platypus was in one of the trailers ended up being an ad for some work productivity app that they had. Like, yeah, it's... When I say that this was an obvious scam, I don't mean that, like, oh, if you were built by this, then, you know, you're a fool. No, no. The people that did the ripoff, they're the problems. I'm not going to sneer down at people who... I do think we have some gas now. So let's do a sulfur distillery. I'm going to put this back at, like, this little plateau here. Um, we're going to find the very best place for this. Put that back there. It fits okay. It fits better right there. So put that there. And bring a road in. And then... Now we can get to the black powder maker. And I can't think of any reason not to have this right across the way. We are missing out a couple squares there if we do it that way. Okay, so we'll put that there. And include that road a little bit further. Okay. And yes, I'm aware that we don't have a warehouse yet. We'll figure that out. And then, we do have scrap coming out, so now we just need the gunsmith. So the gunsmith- oh, wow, this actually fits perfectly right there. That's great. So, this is in range of the warehouse. This- these places aren't, unless I bet you we can pave this road. There. Now we don't have to do anything. And anyway, like, really, the sulfur distillery and the black powder maker should mostly be coming here. They're gonna pick up the resources that they need, like the scrap or whatever, bring it back here, but then the actual parts are gonna go into the gun maker. Jelly buns, viewer recap, and the gross amount of hours I've watched, uh, Mia. It, I, yeah, it's very, very fun seeing all of those. Also, I have to appreciate the fact that the uh, gun maker, like, works inside of a gun. <laughs> they, they say to go with what you know. I like the animations in this game. So, that should pretty soon give us guns, but I don't actually know, like, where we fall for, like, scrap and stuff. And the answer is, even on the topic of water, we're good. Yeah, I don't know why we're still at negative 0.9. I'm still a little bit shy on people, right? So let's go to... Very suddenly switched uh, back to... Anno. Me's not satisfied. Casino. That's right, I haven't built any casino yet. Well, then we can probably satisfy our worker needs with just putting in a casino. But we want the casino to be a little bit centralized. Who are you? Worker residences. Let's, let's either upgrade these guys or move the workers out. We can actually upgrade them. And then once they get moved in, let's see if we can make them Aristobots as well. That, however, has left us with negative 50 workers. So we're going to go to Workerville right here. And we're going to put in some more... Oops. Workers. Uh, well, there's a problem with that. If I put that there... Yeah, we can't... Oops. That building is not connected by a road. And we can't... Okay, okay, here's what we'll do. Uh, let's bulldoze this one right here. And then we'll go here. And we're going to place some fields. And we'll just give ourselves the ability to put in a road right there, yeah? Okay, so now we have all the roads that... Oh, sorry, all of the cow pastures that we need. We'll bring that in. Huzzah. Oh, and you know what? I bet we can even move this one over. Yes. 
And then we'll get another road right there. And then come in here. And if we're very lucky, I didn't count squares here, but... Larg. We can't quite. Let's... Delete there. Can we fit one now? Yes. There. Okay. So now we have workers and now we have engineers. We don't have Aristobots, but again, our plan is to actually upgrade these guys. Actually, we might be able to do that right now. We can. Innertooth does and does not like his Twitch recap, and Jelly Buns is asking why. Uh, Innertooth says hours spent. See, we will frequently have um, streams up in the background, and it's just great for, like, keeping company. You get to hear, you, you know, sometimes you'll be busy. Sometimes you're doing chores, sometimes you're you know, doing something for your job or for work or something. And to have the sounds of people having a good time in the background and having a good, like, conversation or, like, talking through what they're doing in the game, I don't know. I feel like it really lightens the the experience of whatever, whatever work work you have going on. So now we have Aristobots, and we will have many, many more if we can get a casino in here. Don't know where to get a casino. The casino is slightly too large. Um, plus the fact that these are... So what's going to happen is that these um, sand places... The fuck are you mad about? Okay, are we not making enough guns? It feels like we might not have enough guns. And apparently we need some more moonshine, but that's a problem for five minutes from now. So, we need some gas. Okay, they might not have enough guns right now, but generally speaking, they're going to be just fine. Let's go see if we can find some more gas. Because I, I know that we have those, like, green clouds someplace. I just, uh, got to look around with them with my eyeballs. We've got that gas extractor. Those machines are working. Is there... There is absolutely no reason that I haven't dug over here. Because we can, we can absolutely connect this up to our um, conveyor belt system. Interview is watching uh, YouTube and has me up in the, in the background. Yes. Exactly like that. Okay. Down. Over. Down. Waiting, waiting, waiting. There we go. There. That's going to automate that as well. We're adding, we're not only adding efficiency, we're adding quality of life for the people that live here. Um, still on the lookout, by the way, for some more gas. Oh, wait, we can't dig there. We can dig down from here. If there's a way to, like, search in the world to say, like, hey, show me an un untapped gas vein or something. I don't happen to know that. I do know that the type of gas that we're looking for is going to be sort of like a green... a green cloud. And I thought there was at least a couple that... I hadn't tapped yet. Yeah, not like here. A mechanic was eaten. Oh, no! Our thumper got destroyed somehow? How? Okay, can somebody fix this? Yes, that guy can. 
I so as far as I know, thumpers will take the the ground worms and make them go away, like like completely suppress them. I built this one very close to where it is because I figured we get some extra like coverage out of it. But maybe you're not supposed to build them like within chewing distance. Jelly Buns is correct. OSHA isn't gonna like this. The question is, how did it get disabled? I mean, I guess... If... An enemy came out of here, went past all of these turrets, and went over there and ate it, that's possible. It's just... Why go past all the other turrets? Don't worry, we have flamethrowers. I feel like there's a very real danger that if you have an attack and like a bunch of creep spreading at the same time and your guards just sort of like spread thin, seems like that'd be a, a big problem very quickly. But that would really let the creep uh, spread unchecked. Okay, let's check our amounts here. Glass wool, yes. Okay, so the moonshine is going to be a problem in like several hours. We're not too worried about that. But I do need to move these. So where are we going to have our new sand extractors or our old... How about right here? Yeah, that's probably a nice open spot. Grab this. And let's see if we can get 100%. No. No, it really doesn't like the cliff sides. We put one back here, that gets us up to 75%, 95%. Yeah. The trouble is I want to, like, make use of those trees. So, how about this garbage place back here? Yeah. Right. Right there. I'll give up those two squares. And then we'll just have a nice paved road. It comes down here. Goes in there. Perfect. And now if we grab the other guy. Let's have that. Yeah, what's interesting is that it does feel like they can share, like, dirt fields. Which is very un anno -ish. It's fine. Okay, so now we should have enough of that, and that leaves us space at last to get in our casino. So we'll probably redraw this road. Get rid of this. And we're gonna put in the casino right there. Because this is where all of our Aristobots live, so this seems like a good place. Hooray. And now they are ready to be upgraded into scientists. Need to act swiftly, decisively, and who better than you to do so? This better be worth my time. Out with it. We have many of the pieces we need to assemble the vessel, but we cannot reach our goal without securing the aid of some more uh, elevated minds. Science will get us across the finish line. Scientists, are you sure we need those bookworms? We cannot assemble the rocket or make use of the materials we need until the scientific community has lent their services to our cause. Uh, very well. Do what you must. I will see to the finances. Okay, so they're ready to be upgraded. I can upgrade some of them, but I almost want to set up a different community for the scientists because they're probably going to have a whole different like bunch of things that they need so i'm thinking out here ish what the hell is that okay i didn't know that you could click on tumbleweeds to get things that's pretty cool 
Are there any more of those? Yes, there is. Okay. Cool, there's like little goodie boxes that you can get. Okay. So, I'm thinking, uh... Well, if I was a scientist, I'd want to live next to the big rocket that I was building. Let's set up like a, like a scientist fill over here. So... Let's start with things that workers like, because we're going to have to upgrade them from scratch. Maybe back here. This seems like a nice open area. Well, it seems like a crap open area, but we can make it into a nice place. So, let's set up a general store. Uh, let's set up some... It's a shame that you can't blueprint. But I feel like if people get mad, that's fine. Yeah, let's have some... Right there, yeah. And then we'll... Blah. Well, they don't have to line up perfectly. I mean, they do. It'll drive me nuts forever, but... Okay, and now we'll draw a road up here. Okay, everybody's got a road. Everybody's got a road. And now let's just make sure that if we put the general store here-ish, that will... Yep, that covers everybody very well. And then we'll need a service shop. So we put in a service shop right here. Extend that road right between the two. And now we're going to get this onto the main road. Like so. Now, basically the very moment that I can upgrade these guys into engineers, or whatever these guys are, we're going to do that. Which should just be a few more seconds. Good. Alright, so now let's make them into engineers. I may not be able to do that. I have money, but I may not have resources to do that very often. Oh, also, like, Jellybun says that she's suddenly not feeling well, um, so she's gonna put on the TV and then lie down. Jellybuns, I hope it passes quickly and you feel better very soon. Okay, so these guys, they don't care about the service shop, so I feel like, right? Yes. Okay, they don't care about this, so we're going to take that out. Yes. And instead, we're going to put in the saloon. All right, so now they're happy with saloon. From there, they want to have the surveyor's office, and they do still want the general store. So let's get the surveyor's office. We'll put that right... There. They like that. And... Now they want the wash service shop, which is right here. Just double checking. We want everybody to be able to get washed. Oh, <laughs> really had to think about that. So are we in there now? Yes. Done. All right. Now, I have no wood at all, and I'm pretty sure that every upgrade takes wood. Every upgrade takes boards. So, our inner tooth train is going to be here in two minutes. Let's buy lots of boards. I don't really need the money. I would like to have more revolvers, but that's fine. Let's go here. So, we're going to buy boards. And I don't want to buy them for $1,000 a pop, so let's sell... Robo Burgers? Or pl No, I'm gonna want the plastics really soon. Although, like, yeah. Hold on, we'll do this instead of selling it for the boards. Wait, I can't store that many. That's stupid. Let's buy, like, 50 boards. Okay. Create. 
And I might cancel that one, but that's that means that in now one minute, we're gonna have all the boards that we need. Maximum storage is 75. So let me go spend as many boards as we possibly can, and then we'll get a, a jump start on this. Where does this go? Right here. All right, so we're gonna upgrade these guys into Aristobots. I don't know what that person's problem is. Okay, now we are out of boards. Let me actually... Hold on. Okay. I'm sure they'll be fine. Update. Okay, so we're going to sell a lot of plastic in order to get a lot of boards. And what we'll do is we'll just keep upgrading between here and there. So that we can make sure that we get our maximum amount of boards. Maxine is asking, Intertooth, did you know that putting a super large number in numbers input field could crash Factorio? Well, not anymore. Was that in the, like the patch? There was a relatively large patch that just came out. So there's our boards. Okay, now these guys are mad about some damn thing. What are you guys not mad about? They don't have access to the surveyor's office, so we're going to pave that road. There. I have to say, the, uh, the upgrades in this, uh, go much faster than in, um, Anno. Which is not a positive or negative, it's a, just a different, diff a whole different vibe. Okay, so now we want Sheriff's Office, Casino, and Waxing Shop. So what, hold on, what do they not need? They still want this. They don't care at all about the general store. So general store we can take away now. Okay, do they care about the saloon? No. Uh, and we're going to get rid of that, too. So, they do care about the surveyor's office? Oh, no, they don't. Okay, so we'll take that out, too. Okay, so they do want to get washed up. From there, though, they want waxing shop, casino, and sheriff's office. And those should be pretty straightforward. Casino is here. Except I... Now, now I need all those, those plastics that I just sold. So we'll pause on that. How about Sheriff's Office? Oh no, that's Hatmaker. Sheriff's Office also needs plastics. And then... What was the third thing? Waxing Shop. Okay, this at least I can do. We'll put the Waxing Shop right there. Okay, now we've got another three minutes until Innertooth arrives. Let's go here. And we're going to say stop selling. Stop selling all the plastic now. Delete trade. Should we still sell it for $4,000? I feel like I have money right now. So we're going to delete that trade. Some of the rest of this stuff I'm okay with selling. Because I, like I've got lots of burgers and stuff. Maxine says that in uh, Factory went out 1.1.100. That feels like a milestone. I would like to have one more worker house. Or, or an upgrade for our existing worker or engineer houses. Yeah, so hold on. We should have an item that we can slot in. Like this right here. The Moonshiner. Or this one. Yes, let's add... Wait, what specifically does this do? Because it's got a little, like, surveyor box next to it. Hold on. Citizen bonus plus five. I understand that. Oh, 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 oh. It's showing us where it is already slotted. That's what that means. Okay, so let's go to the saloon. Yeah, that's in the surveyor's office. That's in the general store. This is now going to be in the saloon. And now we have, look at, let's five, five people per house. So we went from negative five to 101 extras. Okay, Inner Tooth will be here in 90 seconds, and 
I think then we'll be able to upgrade all these guys. No. Actually, we need to build, like, the sheriff's office and stuff. Sheriff's office. So we can do that right now. Put that in right... Let's put in the sheriff's office right here. That covers everybody. And then wherever the casino will go, we'll, we'll get that fitted in here as soon as we can. And then we'll get our very first scientist. And probably... Well, I was getting attacked down below. I am under attack. How severe is the attack, though? Like, I feel like my turrets generally have things in... ...in check. Oh, um, also, we're still trying to get back here. Like, I still need to pull the blue wire, the blue lever. These don't appear to have like a, like a health bar on them. I, I know they take damage. I know the mechanics come over and fix them. But what I don't feel like I can see is what is their, what's their attack radius? Also, I do wonder like if I put them closer, at what point would they be able to like attack? Like th see how this guy's like coming up over the side? Would I be able to attack right now while he's sort of like animating his way up onto the ledge? It's got an oil vein, that sounds great. Oh, and there's creep back here, too. And one of those. Hold on. No, you guys, don't go back there. Stop it. Um, Thumper? Yeah. The machine was disabled. So, what I'm learning about the, um, and it probably even says it here, the grenade turret... It says explosive shots with great accuracy. That's cool. What I'm actually learning is that they fire very slowly and have a very long range. I do feel like I probably want to replace this turret with one of the flame ones. And maybe move this one so that it can actually shoot down that line. Is there... Can I do a move? You can. Okay. So, yeah. Let's... Let's have that so they get a little bit of, like, coverage. And then this one here, I think once this attack is done... That's what's happening, yep. They're going over there and they're smashing it. So then the, the, the ground worm can come back to life. Let's remove this. And then I want to put a... Oops. Flame turret right there. And I'm going to... I wonder if that's the right place to put it or if I should put it down one. We'll try it right here. Oh, the gas extractor blew up too. And I, oh my god, you guys, I, I'm just looking, I have one mechanic to cover all of that. I didn't realize that my mechanic population was so far down. Le let's, um... That's bedrock. We can put some mechanics in here, I guess. But yeah, this is not enough mechanics to, to run the joint. In here. That's where we'll do it. Yeah. Just like that. And then we might put in some, like, speed pads around here. I guess it depends the paths that people take. But, I mean, look right here. There's just, there's a ton of foot traffic right through here. So let's put a speed vent here. And... Here. And then, like, there. And then we're going to put in another quarters here for mechanics. I am out of tools, which is an interesting place to be. 
The inner tooth will be here in two minutes. I should have a lot of plastic now, so we should go back upstairs and finish our new area. It was casino that I wanted. Okay, so soon we should be able to get to the scientists. I am totally out of tools. Let's trade for tools. We'll go to the train station. We're going to trade something for tools. And I use them all. So we go $1,000 for uh, like one set of tools and we could even trade it over here. Let's... Hats apparently we're fail fading on. And Robo Cuisine, how about that? There. That should keep us pretty full on tools, I hope. Mechanic was eaten. I just got that guy. By the way, uh, Maxine, I did see in Patikin's chat you were noting that um, your most watched uh, um, category was Factorio. I don't have to check ours, because the thing is, like, there's a couple people here that use the account to um, watch things in particular. Okay, Thumper is fixed. Let's get this extractor up and running. Okay, Inner Tooth just came. Now we have lots of tools. I would like to finish making a... Was it here? Ugh. So here's the problem, you guys. I didn't look on the map for where I said I'm going to put in some mechanics. So I'm going to put some mechanics right in here. And actually, I think it was here. Good. Okay, so now we can get up to three mechanics. That's a lot better than before. And why don't we take the rest of this area? Yeah. <laughs> uh, not that kind of... Uh, not quite inner tooth, uh, but Patigan is saying, Anno is saying the second item for me, or say Anno is second for him. I haven't seen Anno streams in a bit. Um, Anno is not gone. Like if you remember last time we built that awesome water park, it was just this game had come out and I was, I'd been very interested in this one for a while and I've never played a Steam World game before, but this one with its focus on like building and dungeon building, dun dungeon delving here, was uh, right up my alley. Okay, now we have a lot more. This is gonna help us keep our machines up and running. Let's go back upstairs. Let's check our resources. So a little, well, then again, we're gonna move those around. We're definitely running out of hats and gas. The gas is the bigger problem and the moonshine. So let's get to scientists because we know that we want scientists. So this is going to cost plastics and Vectron parts. So I don't know that we're going to get very many scientists. We might run... How many Vectron parts? Six? So we can do one. Okay. Oh, so they want water. Robo cuisine. So we are... Nope. Robo Cuisine is an item, not a thing, not a service. So they do want the sheriff, they do want the waxing shop, and now they want the university. So they do not care about the casino, but I can't really pull out the casino because we've only got one of the scientists. Maglev Road. Allow for the fastest movement speed for your steam bots and greatly increase the coverage range of all of your service buildings. That's cool. Um, so here, we need Vectron Scrap, which I assume is going to be down on the third level of the mines, and the Plastic Rooms, which I'm pretty much in there, and that gets us to the Retrofit Shop. So I actually cannot get to more scientists at this time, unless I can trade with Inner Tooth to get the Vectron parts. Uh, trade.
Vectron Scrap, I can. It is 8,000, or sorry, 4,000 to 1 in terms of cash. Can I trade out those drill bits, probably? The sheet metal. So we could do 25 to 1 on that. Uh, I'm going to say okay. And then let's see if we can get a little bit more from someplace. Maybe not the crude oil, robo steaks, water. We want something that's comparatively valuable. Oh, Robo Cuisine is two to one. Well, that's way better. Let's see if we can get... Um, let's see if we can sustain that. Eight Robo Cuisines for four Vectron Scrap. Okay, but now we definitely, definitely, definitely need to get down to level three of the mines. So, also, Patekin was saying that one of his other, like really popular ones was uh, Midnight Suns. I'm... I'm just surprised that it does feel like, like Midnight Suns was a bit ago, so I think it's fun that that was showing up in yours and mine. Mine as well, like, for, like, biggest streamed categories and stuff. Let's think for one second. I wanted to go... We're trying to find the blue wire. Blue wire. Blue wire runs over here, over here... Oh, we can get those tools. There's really no reason not to. And apparently the blue wire goes back here. Intertooth likes dystopias and post-war games. And Intertooth is also saying the music can be a little bit loud. I find the music sparing, but why don't we notch it down a little bit? Like, it doesn't play that often, but we will take it down another, another little bit there. We're gonna, yep. <laughs> Sorry. I'll fix this, and then they immediately get eaten by the worm. Okay. Let's dig this way. And once we get that worm taken care of, I think that we definitely do want to have the oil extractor here because I think I think we were starting to run a little bit low on refined oil. Okay, we doing okay, everybody? No, don't don't bother to reinforce that. We do want to. All of our guards are right here, so the guards, the enemies rather that come swarming out, we'll get them. Inner Tooth has to drop a look. Inner Tooth, thank you so much. I hope you have a great a great rest, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for some more Stardew. Okay, so. I don't know how we would possibly get this back. Hold on, let's dig this out. So we can get those tools. This oil is as far from home as it could almost possibly be. But we could, we could come over here, come down here, go across the bridge, come right through there. Yeah, because now we can dig through granite. And all we'd have to do is basically um, remove that speed pad. Or go around it. Or, yeah, just go around it. Now that we've opened that up. Yeah, let's dig that out. 
And then for our conveyor belt, we're gonna come... Position blocked. Is this, is this rubble? Do they need to clean this up then? Oh, it faces this way. Okay, I mean, that's not a problem. I, I thought it was sort of like or omnidirectional, but we'll go down, over, up and through. We're gonna dig this out right here. Now we can go. Um, yeah, let's bring that to like here. I'm gonna dig this section out. It it absolutely says you cannot reach this tile, which is super weird. It definitely does not want us to dig that one out. Can we dig out that one? Yes. Okay, so we'll bring this over. Midnight Suns was a really great game. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised to see it coming up again in the end of year discussions here. Okay, so yeah, we'll bring it up here, and then we'll just cut right through, right through here. And that way we'll get oil all the way from the other side. That's, that's a good chain, like getting, getting the really distant, um places connected. But that was our final switch, so I think that we can get down to the next level of the track now. Alright, we go in here. Boom. Okay, now this goes all the way over here, here, here. Hopefully this will pick up here in just a second. It does. Okay, so then that comes down here. They converge there, down, over, down, over, down, over. Yeah, that goes all the way out. That's awesome. And we have, yeah, our, our prospectors are still very, very busy, but hopefully not, not overloaded. Oh, hello to First League. Is this game music or Spotify? This is all in-game music. Yeah, sorry if I didn't see you right away. Sometimes I get distracted by the, frankly, all the, the fun animations and stuff. Bedrock we can't dig. Okay, um, I have to find where all of the wires go to. Here. Okay, so we've opened this up and now we can repair this. But I need 10 scientists. That's a weird thing to need, given the fact that I can't actually attract very many more. Let me just double check here. But if I wanted to upgrade to more scientists, I do not have the Vectron parts. We have four right now. Oh, maybe you're supposed to skip to university. Because I'll, I'll build a university. That gets us ten, to ten scientists. Okay, so let's start repairing this. Oh, I guess that's not a time timer thing. I unlocked a new mine floor. Oh, there's, pardon me, there's some gas. I need this gas. Uh, and we can't get out anywhere over here. So let's open that up. I don't know if we can run, um, a conveyor belt through that door. I would be surprised if we could. Oh, no, you can. Okay. Color me surprised. Now, where's our closest over here? And I definitely don't want to pull up any fertile soil, but we could build a new bridge over there. Should be able to. Yeah, we'd go right across there. We wouldn't even have to take out the speed pad. Okay, let's do this in order. We're gonna get our... This. Gas extractor. And I guess I just have a slight question about exactly which side this gets picked up on.
Oh, hold on. I don't like this place one bit. You are fortunate that our goal is to stay here as briefly as possible. That old signal. It was talking up a storm about this endless enemy. Whatever we face down here, you and your steam bots will overcome. For the sake of your daughter. I know when I'm being butted up, Ball. You'd best be straight with me. What's down here? An enemy. I know it can be defeated. Those that lived here stopped it before. I guess there's some truth to that. But if you're hiding something that puts my daughter in harm's way, I'll make you wish you had more than those stumpy cables to run away with. Threat received loud and clear. Okay, I wasn't necessarily planning to go down here yet, but it was giving the indication that there might be some collapses. So we'll get those up and running. Oh, and there's our Vectron scrap. So yeah, we can absolutely start digging this out very soon. Gold, nice. Okay, let's hold on there for one second though, because I wanted to... I am on the wrong floor. Yes, I wanted to get this gas extractor connected. And this one we can connect anywhere that we want. So, oh, and we can get this water over there too. Yes, okay, so let's bring this over, down. We'll connect up the water at the same time as we go past. Let's dig this. And then what we're gonna do is do a bridge. And then probably go. Now I'm out of sheet metal. Darn. Patikan watched a GTA 6 video earlier today about someone from Miami going to locations that were in the trailer. It was actually pretty cool to see the real locations and how much is the same and what's changed. And especially Patikan, this, like, what's the phrase I'm thinking of? The game isn't out yet, so you get to see... You get to see those locations in as close as imaginable to what their references are. Like, maybe their references started four years ago, five years ago, but you're still pretty close now that you know for sure what it is. Um, that looks like I made a big mess there, and I did not mean to. Hold on. Not bridge. No, that's better. And now we're gonna go for... If these don't take sheet metal... Oh, but they do take sheet metal. Yeah, so that's one of the things I'm just a little bit light on. Hold on, let's go visit with Inner Tooth. Let's say don't take away my sheet metal, because I need that for other stuff right now. Yes. Oh, hold on. Cancel trade. Delete trade. Okay, and actually, I have a lot of tools, so I think that we can probably cancel this. And I'm just gonna buy that before Inner Tooth comes. All right. Okay, let's head back down to here. So, I'm getting my uh, scrap metal back. Let's go, let's finish up our bridge. That gives us nine. I don't know how many squares we get for this, but we'll, we'll do our best. And... Perfect! Okay. That is gonna save a lot of people a lot of time. Because now this is gonna come all the way out. When we unlocked um, the conveyor belts, I wasn't yet thinking that they'd be like such a, like, not like such a puzzle, but there's definitely like, okay, what is the route I'm going to take here? Also, we should probably grab that oil because it's so easy now. Why wouldn't you? Let's go to here, here, oil. Oh, hold on. We're out of um, things. 
we're out of mechanic slots. And hold on, let me just look on the map for where I am. So I'm middle-ish, almost exact middle. How about right here? Why not right here? We can dig this out and we'll make a little like machine area. Yeah, we'll dig that too. Also, says Batikin, people need to stop making GTA 6 videos because I see them in my recommendations and it doesn't help because it's a long wait time. Uh, wait, I need workshop. Yes. And yes, I'm going to leave that thumper exactly where it is. So I'm going to lose one square for that, but we'll steal like that square over there. Okay. Now I have two more machines, and one of them shall be for... There, oil extractor. And this would be easy to roll in our conveyor belt. Actually, that conveyor belt's currently going the wrong way, but like the, the conveyor belt's auto route, so I think that it's going to get fixed. Once the machine is actually built. Yeah, I still haven't actually actually seen the GTA teaser that they put out. GTA, what is the six? GTA six trailer. Teaser. Just because I'm, I'm already going to play it, you know? And part of it, Petit, and honestly, part of it is... I don't want to know very much about the game before it comes out. Like, I'm, I'm very comfortable going into it knowing as little as possible. So, I have a lot more oil now than I ever did before. Let's see. Oh, in the moonshine situation, I, I keep talking about it and then not do anything about it. So, and then hats. Okay, let's take these in order. Moonshine. Let's go here. Moonshiner. So we need the sand sifting, sand shifting factory, sand sifting factory to the glass blower. How am I doing on glass? We're even on glass. We have lots of sand. So we need to get the glass blower. Um, I guess glass blower will put. Well, why don't we put the glass blower right here since we're right across the street from the factories. Yeah, this is inside their radius, so we're going to put you right there. And then... How are we doing on cactuses? We have lots of cactuses, so we're just going to skip straight to the Moonshiner, and the Moonshiner we're going to put right there. So I think it takes a bit to spool up, so we're going to disregard uh, Moonshiner. Oh, no, it doesn't. Look, it's right there. So now our next big crisis is hats, because we are almost out of hats, and then people will be very mad about it. So hats. Sand sifting factory. We just started using more sand, so I'm just going to double, double check. So we're going to need another sand sifting factory. Actually... That is steam powered, and that is steam powered, and that is steam powered. This is not steam powered. Can we make it be steam powered? No, because it's already inside the radius. Not without moving it like up over here. Um, try it. Or, or we could use the maglev road. Hold on, we haven't even put this in yet. Now are you steam powered? No. <laughs> so close, but not close enough. All right, then, I mean, at worst, we just put down another one. It's, it's not a big deal. I just like to get the, get the most of it. Okay, um, sorry, I need hats. Hat, hat. Glass wool spinner. How am I doing on glass wool? I have exactly enough. So yeah, that means that I need more. So we're going to put down a glass wool spinner. And I think that we can fit this like here-ish and it'll still get the bonus. No. 
Yeah, we are one square short. Okay, then let's just move it to within the squares. Um, we will put the glass wool spinner. We'll put you right... Um, but that's not wide enough to go anywhere, though. Okay. I, I'm begrudgingly putting you right there. So now you'll get the steam bonus. Yes. Yes to steam. So... Okay. I'm gonna... Uh, we have to rework things so that our machines are not constantly getting disabled, because I'm pretty sure that they cost money to do that. Cost money and resources to set back up. But let's keep our eyes on Hatmaker. Hatmaker can go right here. Why not? Uh, how about right here so we're not accidentally deleting any trees? So the advantage there is that as far as I know, the hat maker will now pick up directly from the glass wool spinner. And the only thing is that I'm pretty sure we're going to need some more sand. Yep. Yeah, we are eating now a lot more sand than we did before. So we're going to go over here and... I... I, if we get one back here, we might, might get the, um, the steam bonus. If we get that fertility, like, the productivity up above 100%. No, this, uh, like, I'm just eyeballing the number of squares that it takes to get there, like, the road squares. I don't think it's gonna come out. Let's try it right there. We'll see what we get. Let's build a maglev road straight back to it. This has 100% fertility. Oh, it doesn't... No, it does benefit from the steam. I hope. So hopefully that will get a little bit of a bonus to it as well. How are we now doing on sand production? We're doing very well on it. Also, Maxine is saying, out of hats is a good thing Patekin is here. Patekin has better hats than these guys do. These guys have like... um. Cowboy hats. Patina's has top hats. I would definitely take the top hats. Diesel. Uh, not Jones. We have lots of crude oil. Like, lots of crude oil. Also, I don't know how to increase the, um, storage capacity. Maybe I should look really quick just to see very quickly. Because the warehouse doesn't do it. Uh, you know what I think does it? I think there's items that do it. I think you can slot certain items into the warehouse to increase capacity. I might be making that up, but I think that I saw that. Let's go to diesel plant. So diesel plant goes to oil refinery. I do have a little bit of extra oil refinery. Let's put in diesel plant. That sounded very bad. All right, we're gonna put that there. And mostly just for stylistic purposes, I'm going to put a road back here. Except I'm not, because it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Well, I'm just going to have to weep to myself that the road... It doesn't actually face the road. Can I move it in one? Oh, I can. Huzzah. There. Okay, what the hell? Why... Why... Why is this collapsing? It didn't collapse before. I think that the guys will come over and dig it up. I wonder what happened. Like, this wasn't unstable previously. Okay, well, that's a... We can do another farm right there. Done. Okay. I feel like we're good... Wait a second. No. Okay, I was trying to figure out, is it 
conceivable that we built more stuff on the surface and then that put more weight on the mines but i really don't think it's that kind of game like as you build more on the surface you need more supports underground oh, hold on can i do an item here yeah this is perfect that's exactly what it is so global storage plus 25 simultaneous, simultaneous deliveries plus three and then we might have more, two more that we can do, I'm not sure. Okay, lower workforce, I've got plenty of people. Production bonus pl chance plus 25%, production speed plus 80%. Well, I feel like I would either, I would really want something that's very valuable to give that, oh, well maybe the crude oil, which by the way, I haven't finished doing yet. Oil refinery. So the oil refinery is frustratingly large. However, we can slot it back here, just behind this thing, the steam, the steam factory. I'm good with that. And then we'll just build like a, like a road. Nope, like a road that goes right there. Okay, but still not that. As long as you're connected, you're not connected. There. That's, that is enough. Waiting for resource delivery. And the warehouse is right there. So, oh, have 40 refineries boosted by steam. Yeah, as soon as the little steam thing here was introduced, then I was like, oh, oh, I, I see how I'm going to have to, like, want to move this. I also do think, hold on, I think that we can move this one in. Oh, we absolutely can move it one in. I don't know why it wasn't one in before. Because that just extends like what we can do out here. Now, the oil refinery or this guy right here, the diesel plant, I kind of feel like if I'm going to put an item that's going to give us plus 80% um, production speed, it'd be right here. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's what that means. It's in the plastic factory. Okay, so lower workforce by 90%. Right at this moment, I have so few scientists that wherever I'm going to put a scientist to work, I feel like that's probably what I'd want to do. I've only got 12 in the whole world. Maxine has to go to sleep. Maxine, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. I hope you have a great evening. Okay. The retrofit shop takes plastic shrooms and Vectron scrap. And I have 22 Vectron scrap. So let's build a retrofit shop. Which is a... It uses Vectron scrap to produce Vectron part for the crazed, crazed experiments of the scientists. I can afford every part of this. So we're going to put this right up here. Um, ish. So here's the thing. I do really want to leave some space to put in some more like trees and stuff. Oh my God. Look at how well this fits. That's perfect. Okay. Low production. Why? Is it... Oh, because we don't have enough scientists. Yes. So let's put in that thing right now. There. Now I don't have low scientists. I may not want to keep that there forever, but... No, it still says this. Well, I don't have low scientists anymore. Oh, I think it's warning me that I have very low production of the Vectron scrap, which is absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should actually probably go down to the third floor, but I'm, if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of not getting too deep into that. We definitely need more plastic shrooms, though. Okay. Let's... Let's make sure... Well, there's definitely no, um... Uh, whatever it's called. Soft areas down here, loamy soil here. There is loamy soil down here that's untouched. However... It's on the, like, right here, right? So... 
I'm going to run the risk that we can harvest some of that. And then way over here, we'll do we'll get anything that we can out of that as well. Oh, and hello to Samalander. Samalander, I hope that you had a great evening. I was so excited that um D and D went well. Let's think for a second. I don't need any more miners right now. Okay, if I go here. It does show on the map. Okay, it does show on the map that you can see when you press tab, it takes you to where you can grow it. Okay, that is extremely helpful information. Let's dig out everything here that might cover up soft soil, fertile soil. Sam, I hope you had a great day at work. I hope that you're... Um, Work is getting to a point where you'll be able to like wrap it up for the year and get on to some to some nice holiday time. Okay, that's bedrock, that's bedrock, that's brittle bedrock, and really theoretically you might have some loamy soil underneath it. And now, we're, as soon as they dig that out and maybe clean it up, we will get as many plastic shrooms as we can. Work was fine. Two weeks left before break. I am at, uh, I believe, one week as of tomorrow. And then my producer will follow very shortly, very shortly thereafter. I do not have 34 tools. I think we need inner tooth, but inner tooth won't be here for three minutes. We're at 30 of 34. Part of me wants to, like, build what I can, and then part of me also... Hold on, here's what we'll do. I'm going to put it into fast-forward mode here for a few seconds. 32. If I wander away, then I'll forget that I didn't do this, and then we're going to be at negative plastic shrooms. There. Let's set it back to normal speed. Okay. Now, there is one last thing that we can do on this floor... I never built any radar installations, and they would help us to know if there's something else out there. I just... Maybe I'm just being foolish. I just sort of don't know where that would be. Like, if you look, if we look, there's all bedrock, all bedrock, all bedrock. It just looks like we've reached the outer limits of what this map is. And possibly over here? Eh, possibly over here. So let's build, can we get like a small surveillance room? Facilities, surveillance facility, surveillance facility. Um, well, no, we can't because I don't have any tools. Patikin has to turn in as well. Patikin, thank you so much. Thank you for the fun Spider-Man stream earlier today. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Patikin is currently doing a... Let's... There's a bunch of people here. Hold on. Let me just do a quick shout-out for Patikin again. A quick shout-out for Inner Tooth. Quick shout-out for Samalander. Oops. Oops. Samalander. And Platform... Platypus. Whoops. Was in here as well earlier. And I enjoyed his stream very much. He's sort of like moving back into streaming after having taken an extended hiatus. And anytime I can encourage, encourage people to, to come on back, seems worthwhile. Okay, let's... I'm out of tools. Am I out of anything else? Do we have any other crises? The Vectron parts, obviously. But no, everything else we're looking good at. All right, let's go... A down a level. So, here's our most unexplored level. I have no nothings down here. So, if I can, let's start with some minor quarters. That gives us three miners. Awesome. So, we're going to start excavating. I have... Is this Screaming Skull? Is this, uh, Necron? 
Oh, it's enemy soil. Hold on. No, no, don't dig that out. I'm extremely glad that I stopped to look at it for a second. I was honestly thinking that was a Vectron, like, um, uh, like, like a scrap, uh, vein. A, a, a Vectron vein that we could harvest indefinitely. But no, that's an enemy. We don't have any guards down here at all. No, stop, stop. Yeah, we have to dig carefully down here. Now, I believe, you know what? Let's... I don't know if you can dig uh, diagonally. I don't know if that counts. And I don't want to guess. So, let's dig this out. And then we're going to get guards down here. That's actually going to be our very, very next thing. Because the, the, the enemies are ready to rock. Scaly one, hello to you! Scaly one, I wanted to let you know, because I know that sometimes, like, our, our, you know, time is limited. Um, you were one of the, the top chatters. And I wanted to go over the, um... Like, the, uh... <sighs> The recap before the end of the stream, which I'm keeping one eye on. We've got about 15 minutes before I really, really stop. But hold on, let's tread carefully, dig carefully. Okay, so now we've got some, at least some guards. Let's put some items in there. Uh, I don't want to take any guards at all away from level two, because I feel like we have some pretty consistent attacks coming up there. So I don't have any guard quarter bonuses up here. Let's bounce up to the main level. Let's see if Inner Tooth has anything good for sale right now. No, not for guards anyway. Let's buy some gold and let's buy some minor equipment because it's awfully easy for us to right now go all the way back downstairs and we'll just have them we have a lot of digging left to do in this world so let's give them gold scavenging abilities hello to mr torque who says it's the auspicious angel and patikan comedy show I have always wanted to do... Well, why would I want to break through that door? Um, Inner Tooth will be here in three minutes. I... Kind of... Oh, actually, you know, we could get a whole bunch of scientists for this. I mean, I have money, right? Yeah, I've got 1.3 million, so... I can afford that. We've been selling excess for a while. Like, all during the time that we've been talking. So, let me go to the university, and we will get plus five citizens in our one scientist house. There. <laughs> we did it. We went to 15. Okay, we're going to go downstairs. So, now we have some guards. Let's very gingerly find out if we can dig kitty corner to this or if it's going to be a problem. It is not a problem so far. So we can get a little bit of extra Vectron scrap then. So let's dig down, down, and then we're going to take that one. Oh, that's cool. They have different digging tools sometimes. And we did discover a dirty water vein and an oil vein. Hive is preparing to attack. So, seriously though, can we fix this? Can we make it so that they don't smash down my buildings? This area I do feel like is pretty good, so it is the other one. Or is it this one that's pretty good? Um, I feel like I'd like to move this up one and then maybe have another one over there. So let's, let's hold on. I'm gonna take both of those. And then we're gonna put in another flame turret right there. Do 
Jav says not much is new. He did that one run of Shadow Warrior 2 because he wanted to test that gun with explosive ammo, but has not played it since. Mr. Tor is on a hiatus himself uh, as I'm farming skill points and skull totems in Skull Totems in Back for Blood. You are the first person that I've seen use the phrase Skull Totems with regards to Back for Blood. I did not know that that was a thing. So, like, I do feel like maybe this should be a little bit closer, but also looking at it, this farm is too small to operate. A farm needs to be at least nine tiles. Okay, well, I'm not the one that made it less than nine tiles. It's probably warning me that you should probably just take this away. So let's actually bulldoze that down. Yes. Because I can't dig out this bedrock, and I don't seem to have access to other, like, loamy soil. The other thing that we might do is, like, move this down one, and then get another one right next to it armory. Also, I haven't interacted with the, um, lightning turret, but that's because I don't have 50 scientists. There. Anybody that comes down this is gonna have a very bad time. We've got two grenade turrets and two flame turrets very soon. It's a melee weapon found in... Is it called Ridden Hives? Is that the name of it? Back for Blood is one of those games that I firmly believed that I would get into a little bit after release, and then a little bit became a lot of bit, and I haven't then visited it. Um, and I feel like that's the experience that a lot of folks had with it, which is sad because it felt like it was like a good return to form, and people like yourself, Mr. Torg, really speak well of it, like seem to have a lot of fun with it. Machine constructed, yes. Okay. Next attack. Oh, next attack. This is not when Inner Tooth comes. But I do feel pretty good about the, the tools that we have set up here. All right, let's go down a level. Let's unearth one of these. I am... I don't know what kind of enemies will come up, but we've got three guards. Train arrives in three minutes. Oh, wait, Inner Tooth might have come while I was looking at that. Okay, well, I mean, I'll, I'll buy this, but what we didn't get is any new guard pieces. So, let's slot in our digging upgrade. 200% dig speed and 33% movement speed. Okay. Breathe in and out. Let's... Let's do it. We're gonna see our very first enemies here on level 3. It looks like it's gonna be a horrible robot monster. It's very tough. Okay, yeah, let's definitely make a pact not to open those up. Now, I, I don't know if these guys will heal themselves or if we need mechanics down here to heal them. So, let's maybe tentatively hollow out. So, Here's another thing. I very much want to keep some space around this because we know we're going to need, like, conveyor belts and stuff. But I also want to get to some... Oh, and let's for sure get the rest of that now. We definitely want to get ourselves to some um, mechanics to either heal or, re or um, like, resurrect guys that fall over. That's bedrock. Let's take that side. Okay, I don't feel like we found the edge of this soft soil yet. This is a very large patch, uh, and I like it. 
I also like the fact that we do have some just like straight up bedrock pillars here, so I'm not going to have to worry too, too much about putting them. Then again, I bet you ne do need more braces, ceiling braces, as you go further down. don't know what that giggling in the dark is. It seems concerning. Jab is saying that he'll probably go back to the build in a few months. I'd love to play it with a group of four with comms and everything. Probably never going to happen again, though. I don't know what kind of, um... You guys know a lot more about, um... Shadow Warrior 2 than I do, for sure. A guard was disabled. So part of the problem is that the guards tend to charge down this hallway and get got. Wait, what machine is disabled? Yeah, no, I get it. A miner left to do to low quarter size. Why? Oh, maybe like a quarter got um, blown, like uh, eaten. Maybe it got like disrupted and torn up. Okay, well, I am basically at the time that we have for right now because I did want to take a look at like the the Twitch end of year stuff. It's short. It's just like an extra fun thing. So let's call it here. We're gonna go back up to the surface. Uh, we did a bunch of stuff that I had intended to do for a refreshing change. We did get our uh, gun manufactory up here, and we started to progress towards scientists, and I believe that now we're going to be able to start sustaining more scientists. In fact, I bet we could even do a couple on our way out. Yep, that, exactly that many, in fact. So we've unlocked a new milestone, and we will learn more about that uh, next episode. So let's save it right here and then we will see you guys again for some more Steam World build in the near future. Uh, yeah, the deeper that we go into this game, the deeper it gets, which I am enjoying a great deal. Also, we need to do something about that warehouse because it's having trouble picking up all of its stuff. Uh, we'll check with um, Inner Tooth when he gets in again. Oh, hold on. We just found an upgrade for our people. So we're going to grab that right now. And then go put it in. Hold on. We're extending the stream by exactly five seconds here just to do that. So now we get some good range damage. Okay. Now we're going to save it up and call it an episode. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we are looking forward to a regular week of normal streaming this week. And then hopefully a, an expanded week of awesome streams next week. So hopefully we'll see you then. And until next time, I hope you have a great night.